Ooh, what is up guys and of course as always welcome back to another of course Wi-Fi battle which is truly this guy render and now we're in week 5 in LBC and we're going up against a person I'm a really big fan of but never actually battled Moxie Boosted uh, really check out his channel he's doing great content and just overall really really inspiring to watch and uh, never imagined I actually faced this guy ever in generation 7 so I'm quite happy no matter how this game really goes about because well oh, quite unexpected I'll be honest say that uh, and of course his team Chicago Black Fox uh, straight off the bat can I cover um, fast my team and my thought process behind his team um, my team is on of course that side with Garchomp, Tabakoku, Halucha, Nehalego, Scizor, Yuxi, Jellison, Miltanks, Rina, Pilswine and Mega Haldoom um, my opponent here has Heatran, Tapu Bulu, Shansi, Kamo, Telecruel, Psyguard, uh, Golisopod, Mighty Anna, which down in its own right is awesome, uh, Alola Raichu, Rolden Fan, and Mega Manette. Um It really goes without saying, like, this team really, really do pressure a lot of my Pokemon quite well. There are Pokemon that absolutely can't make it because of how they're friendly. Uh, Golisopod is a Pokemon don't switch into too well. Um, while it's a marriage exit is a walls and purposes, I guess, a bad ability. Uh, here it really does push me. First impression really does a lot of damage to me. And it kind of um, com complicates my uh, speed control quite a lot. Uh, so, Pokemon that absolutely wasn't making it was Serena, Mega Hound, Doom, and Yuxi because they simply can't keep up. Jellicent, however, is a good response for it, and Jellicent overall can do really well here. Um, she would know that the Goliaths were totally knockoffs, so that's something I have to watch out for. Um, but overall, um, Jellicent absolutely make it for this matchup because of Taunt and keeping Chansey at bay. Because Chansey can be annoying. Um, my best attackers for this team are specially based, and Chansey spudged that quite right. Um, and of course, Bulo really, really complicates things for Halucha with, even though we can hit this super effectively, um, my main issue is going to be setting up sword stances and to get my train and, of course, seed going. I really was considering having the grass as seed just to kind of counterplay it, but I think if he doesn't bring Bulo, it's going to look really bad on me. So, my team has followed here was actually bringing a Sword Stance variant of Garchomp with a Yasha Berry, Tapu Koko, it's a Dual Stab, Roost, and Calm Mind. Uh, in theory, that set can win, win with his chance in the long run. Um, if I lose Halucha Darla, I need to start break up uh, Halucha. It does really well versus the team, the only two Pokemon that's kind of annoying are Raichu and Rodan Fan. Uh, so we will be carrying Stone Edge for Roland Fan alone, and we are jolly instead of Adamant to be able to parry his uh, um, Surge Surfer from Raichu and be able to take that out anyway. Um, really hope that works. I really don't like going Adamant or going Jolly or Adamant. But Raichu can be such a big threat here for me just because it actually resolved one of those really niche issues. Um, Nehaleo, Assaultus variant, um, able to do well versus his special attackers, but uh, that's about it. Um, we have a combination of Thunderbolt, Inner Power Ground, uh, Sludge Bomb instead of Sludge Wave to get Poison and Pokemon to switch in, and Dazzling Gleam. Um, we are speed enough to make sure that once a Beast Boost kicks in, we are boosting ourselves with special attack over speed, but I really want to have that mentioned. Uh, then we have Scissor. It is a Scarf Scissor, able to outspeed uh, the Lola Raichu. Um, didn't want to invest more for Saigar. I feel that I naturally shake that, and it's very unlikely he goes 115 anyway. But Scarfed, U turn, just try to pick off Raichu as easily as I can. And just overall, being Scarf means that I can pivot freely as long as it doesn't get Stealth Rocks on the field. And my last Pokemon was, as for mentioned, Jellicent. Uh, Taunt variant with Scald, Will-O-Wisp, and Recover. Uh, Taunt is to, well, for Chansey alone actually, but we are able, depending on his Heatran set, to outspeed that too, so we're not fully bulky. We have some speed investment for bulky Heatran, so we can't set Rocks versus us or Toxic us. Because Skull is not doing anything versus that anyway. It's super effective, sure, but yeah, that's about it. Um, team I kind of expecting. Oh, I should also mention Pillar Swine and Miltang was 
barely cutting it. Um, Miltai because actually did a lot of work with this type of bolo uh, with Sap Super, but it was too passive and I felt I could easily get set up upon with that set. So I kind of went against it. And Pillow Swine, mainly because of knockoff, uh, I feel that um, if the Goliath Sport carries knockoffs, then um, Pillow Swine can be quite redundant. And of course, it doesn't switch in well versus Citron either. So, yeah, and Topo kicks its ass too really well, so yeah, there were a lot of hiccups and Serena as for mention. Actually, now I think about it, neither Serena nor Yuxi has been used once this season, and I feel bad for them. I really was looking forward to using them, but the chance just hasn't been there. Uh, so the team I'm expecting, um, Heatran, Bolo, Chansey, for sure. Goliath spawn, absolutely. Um, Alola Raichu. Is it Alola Raichu or Rona fan? Uh, but Alola Raichu makes so much sense versus me, so I'll heavily um, see that coming. And then Tentacruel because it does really do well versus um, Scissor. Um, but yeah, Kamo could make it too, I guess. But uh, my thought process is that absolute on Heatran, Bulu, Shansi, uh, Goliath Spot, and Alola Raichu, and the rest can be a toss up for me. Uh, but those are my Pokemon I was prepping for, uh, so with all this said, let's see what the team matchup was. So, yeah, from the matchup alone, I, I, I gotta say, I was considering Kamo to an extent, but we see no Raichu, we see no Rotom. So, in theory, if I get my Haolucha of the plus two, I should be able to win this quite effortlessly. Um, it's one of those cases where you, just, you see a lead waste that just screams wide open, yet this game is 68 turns, so it's clearly clear that never transpired, and if it did, it took way too long. And that's where we're at. I'm saying it's 68 turns battle because I'm going to be able to force to speed up this game, but overall, this game went really, really not my way. My opponent here wants even though the matchup looks, from my perspective at least, like I have an absolutely more favorable matchup, I was playing against somebody who absolutely knew how to parry any potential sweep from my side, and I really want to have that said before going in, because this game was something else for me. Um, never in my life have I felt that I've been, I've been forced to play passive because my opponent was just owning <laughs> owning, absolutely owning the momentum. So really with all this said, um, I'm going to lead off with Scissor because since it's Scarfed, I kind of felt it made the most sense to see if I can get something out of that. So that was basically my fun process. Really with all this said, let's go into the match. So from the start here, my brother going to lead off with Goliath and Pod. So that's okay. That works in our favor. Um, it's not the worst matchup, but Goliath Pod wins this matchup if anything. Uh, he's actually going to switch out um, and go to Gib, which is his Trentacruel, and I decided to go directly for a U-turn. Um, so, straight off the bat, I have the course possible momentum. Uh, I actually got to bring in Nehalego, since I felt it naturally kind of wins this matchup anyway. And we see Black Sludge, um, so I was feeling possibly Reflect type. I go for Thunderbolt there just to get as much damage as possible. And we look to be in range of a 2 hit KO. Uh, we carry his knockoff, um, nothing to it, clearly. And uh, I'll just keep spamming Thunderbolts. And of course, Chansey comes in here. And, um, well, the game is halted, basically, from here. I can't do anything versus Chansey, nor is that my intent with Neho Lego. But this this is a, a matchup I can't win. So bringing Fulgore, uh, predicting him to go over Toxic or Cycling Toss or Stealth Rocks. Um, and, well, we we'll side toss, so that's alright. Uh, I go directly for a turn again, and he's switching to his Diver down, they go on apart, and here is where we'll see that he's Rocky Helmets, and I don't do necessarily any damage from being adamant, full offensive, that what the hell is this close up, but I hate that mod. Uh, Ring and Medusa, um, my easiest play here is go for Willowis, but I can kind of gauge it if he's having knockoff or not. Uh, but it brings to the Spice Girl. Uh, so we get that Wisped, and um, little does he know, I have the means, of course, parry Shansi to an extent with Jellicent. Uh, Taunt is absolutely my main response, and uh, 
Depending on his movesets, he can potentially hurt me at all, uh, which is good. It clears good for us. I'm actually going to go for another will wisp because I have no reason not to, um, as it brings in uh, the Tapu Bulu. And this was huge. Like, I I'll be honest, and from here on out, I thought I have a guarantee win. I get everything right, and uh, his main offensive attackers are now well down to count, if anything. Um, I felt really good about myself, I'll be honest. I'll, I'll switch to Fulgur here just to take the Woodhammer. Uh, quite frankly, I thought just to try to get some recovery. Uh, but Woodhammer does mere not recover uh, near more. But necessarily not by a lot. Um, <laughs> but I felt it right. I'll do as I always did, which is U-turning. Uh, he actually decides to stay in. Um, and I started thinking, what could he go for? Uh, so after all things considered, I decided with type of Coco just to, if he goes for a Grass UMC, at least I can kind of parry his um, his boosted wood hammers, um, or the C move, but he goes for C move at least, but it is actually stunage. Um, so yeah, Cotton Little Crush will do a significant chunk. It says it's burned, I'm not, I'm not in a range where I would be KO'd anyway, but uh, it does a really good chunk of me due to crit. And uh, my easiest play here is actually go directly for Roost. I was kind of hoping he would go for a Woodhammer, uh, trying to knock himself out, but that didn't happen. He goes to the Spice Girl and, um, well, he can get a free softball if he wants to, and I knew that was an aspect I needed to keep myself away from. Um, so I switch out, I go back to Fulgore. Really, like I said, I was hoping he's gonna go for self rocks or anything else, but seismic toss because for clearly seismic toss. And uh, I, I'm not a very smart man. I went for U turn, and uh, he's gonna capitalize on that and bring the lines of is gonna knock me out. Oh, why is for knockoff? Even better. Uh, so I do at least activate his emerge exit, but Rocky Hammer does kill me. The only merit I get from that is that he's forced to show me what he switched to before I decide what I switch to. So he sets up Grassy Terrain, I was considering can I bring uh, Tapu Koko here and kill him with a Dazzling Gleam, but I'm, depending on his set I'm not in range, so I decided to bring in Garchomp, but here's where I realized I made a terrible mistake. I was supposed to be stomping Tantrum here and not Earthquake, and the reason I say this is because I really don't want to, or I really don't want to, I, I get something bad out of this because Earthquake is clearly nerfed from this. Um, like we get some momentum in actually getting him poisoned. The poison does more damage than his uh, grassy terrain is giving him back. But I can't stay in. I don't want to take a first impression. I go to Necromedusa just to soak that hit. And uh, soak it we do. Just not as well as I hope for. <laughs> so he's absolutely arranged for to be taken out. But um, yeah. Um, he's of course going to save this Pokemon. I think I was trying to be gutsy here and I went for a Scald in case he was going to go for knockout predicted my um, um, predicted my possible recovery uh, so we do get a Scald burn here which is you know, finally, we haven't gotten that like forever and um, yeah just from this situation I felt that um, Sludge Bomb was going to be annoying for us to take and I have a few switches that may or may not make sense but uh, I decided I think eventually I had to go to uh, Nihilego and uh, my opponent read me like a fiddle as he goes to Chansey and uh, well I can't win versus Chansey, this matchup is, as stated before, it's a very losing matchup and uh, well I clearly lose for it. Um, so my opponent here is uh, getting a free turn to do whatever he wants to. I go to Saxus, my guard jump just to get as much possible from this. Uh, as it goes for heal balls, no, now Coco isn't burned or Bull isn't burned, and that's that's absolutely annoying. Uh, I'll go for Swords here just to be able to really KO this Chansey after after an earthquake. He goes for Toxic, it all makes sense. Um, I was considering you know, switching out and whatnot, but my, my switching would be Nihilego, so something has to take this Toxic no matter what. Uh, so he's not gonna switch out, and I am very, very bad at reading people. Um, of course, Poison Jam would have made more sense, uh, or even Dragon Claw, uh, but I go directly for an Earthquake, and as I said before, 
I was really, really frustrated with myself that I didn't have Stomping Tantrum. The idea was to always be able to go for Dragon Claw and double the damage with Stomping Tantrum to kill something. So Garchomp's kind of main niche here was, it still functioned as a wall breaker, but it wasn't my intent that it was naturally nerfed to, of course, the Grassy Terrain. So it brings in Heatran, uh, and of course you get it with Chukaberry and Grassy, grassy, grassy freaking Terrain, it does survive. It barely survives, but my god, it does survive. <laughs> Uh, and I can easily here go for Dragon Claw, I was kind of wiggling myself back and forth, which one what would be the better play, but really, does it matter? No, it doesn't. Uh, so we get Heater out of the way, and I guess that's that's a possible win, at least against something killed with this sword stance. Um, I'll be honest, the way my opponent plays here really, really pushed me for a loop, because I realized that Garchomp was such an excellent overall breaker, and I kind of just screwed it all over. Um, so he goes to his gold XP, and I went for Dragon Claw. So, yeah, it, it's not a pretty sight. <laughs> it absolutely isn't. I uh, really was regretting not going for just Earthquake, just keep Earthquaking. But you know what it is, what it is. He now followed this up with Diver Down, and I think I went for Poison Jab just to hell with really my. This is my last turn before Toxic takes me out. Uh, Rocky Helm is not able to take me out, so chance to get the heal on, on Garchomp. And uh, yeah, we knocked out Heatran, then we knocked out Glyzebomb. We have a chance to tell the cruel combo when Bulu left. And uh, it is all about which of us get the right turn here. I actually bring in Aislin hoping that Bulu was gonna come in. So thank god it did. <laughs> Basically, I was trying to not get this Pokemon to get any type of recovery back on me. But yeah, this is the part where I'll actually speed things up a little bit because this battle is starting to become a lot longer than it needs to. So the run on here is that Tabu Kokemon decides to bring in, cancel the terrain, and then some way get Lucha in. Well, he reads me and he gets Bulu in for free. I can't dazzlingly kill him. I bring in Lucha as his substitute. And uh, my only way of actually breaking this up to is go for acrobatics. He goes Stone Edge, luckily doesn't have to send headbutt, but he's definitely in range where he'll be taken out. Um, and it goes to his Chansey, which takes it really, really well. Uh, now I'm forced to switch back into Rancis, uh, because High Jump Kick will do nothing. Well, if I don't have, of course, a Sword Sense behind me. As uh, I get a Call Mine here when I switch out to his Grassy Terrain Bulu. And we are able here to knock out his Bulu, which is amazing and a great leeway for us as anything. Um, but he still has Pokemon that can deal with as well, and of course Thunderbolt's not longer boost, and I'm gonna bring in Lego. Uh, the initial thought here was to try to, um, I'll be honest, to get this thing poisoned and see if that works. Uh, he brings in Tentacruel, which is quite right. Uh, I decided to go for Thunderbolt and get this knocked out and get the special attack race, which is awesome. But um, versus Chansey, it may or may not be redundant. Uh, so he switches back and forth, and his combo is absolutely not taking a slot. I was predicting me to switch out. Uh, that didn't happen, and uh, here is a spot where I try to get as much damage as possible, but he is absolutely winning this because of softball. I don't get a poison, and just overall, like my damage output, while high now versus Chansey, it's it's, it's, it's just not there, so eventually I will lose this if anything. So I bring in Necroducer, I get it right on the Seismic Toss, and um, from here on I just taunt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because it left doors, I kind of figured it was Bulk Up, Soul Stance, or um, that the combo itself was Dragon Dance. Um, so uh, with that in mind, I just keep going for taunts so you can't set up. Uh, the only merit he gets from that is that the left doors do eventually recover from him. Uh, so he's trying to go back and forth, trying to get as much HP as possible on his combo before setting up, hoping that I mess up and don't taunt. Uh, but I am always taunting. Uh, <laughs> and this time I should predict him to switch out. I get the Will O Wisp on the combo, which is super crucial, because this means potentially that can't win versus me. But um, a Dragon Claw here actually will do a fair chunk of damage. I'm really surprised how much it did. Um, so it's very good that this is burned, but uh, I am not standing now. Uh, I think I'm bringing in Tabu Koko just to get as much momentum as possible. As um, I was feeling, he could have poison jab, and that could be in range of taking us out, but it's highly unlikely. And I go directly for a dazzling gleam. 
And now switch back to Nick Medusa as he goes to softball, which was good. Heading over Toxic there, things could have turned kind of ugly. Uh, luckily for us, it doesn't. And um, we are now in a spot where he is trying to kill me, and I'm just basically going for skull hits, trying to get his Pokemon out. Because as soon as Combo is down, I win this. And if he crits me, um, then he doesn't win, but uh, you know, um, he will at least knock out money from Dusa. Um, and I really failed to kill here. I am so close to killing him, but uh, luckily I'm still in range where uh, he doesn't take me out. And these last few turns are gonna be um, basically Chassis just slowly but surely dying to taunt. Um, I really had no real means from here to actually kind of wrap up. Um, Yes, I could have played Coco Lucha in this scenario. I absolutely could. Um, once Bulu was down, I was free to do so. But uh, at the time, I just I couldn't get that naturally work. Like I, if I mess up Lucha, um, his combo and Chansey could wall me, or even more so, Chansey could wall me. And um, Jellicent was an anti response to Chansey. I didn't expect it to take it out the way it did. But I was really happy that it did, but it looks rather, rather tough to look at. So looking back at the game, I kind of want to first and foremost thank Moxie for the game itself. Um, I, I really like how he tackles my team. Like, he is probably the only player I faced this season who actually dealt with the Coca Lucha combo without actually having a check for it. He just dealt with it. He covered it and there was nothing to it. He naturally switched in versus me so well. And while I come out on top because of Taunt alone actually on Jillis and that that's the God on his truth. Um, I still think it plays this game very smart and um, yeah, I, I was genuinely impressed. Like it doesn't matter how the game itself turned out I feel because this was a performance game that I think my opponent was doing better than me. Uh, absolutely. Um, as I said here, my intent was to get Lucha in and Swole Stance and wrap up the game. But that didn't happen. I didn't come in a position with that Pokemon naturally. And it has a lot to do with Coco not having, of course, U-turn. But also that I should have had the Grassy Seed. I knew in my mind I should have just had that come in versus a Bulu instead of versus that. I think it's a mess up on my side, but I wanted to play safe, and uh, so did my opponent, which made this game so tough for me. Um, so for what it's worth, thank you so much for this game, Moxie Boosted. Like I said, big fan of your content, and I'm just really glad I had the chance to battle you, and I hope to battle you soon again in the next generation. So with that said, thank you of course all everybody for watching, and I'll see you next week. Until then, take care.